Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're taking a look at the first commercially produced French semi-automatic pistol. This is the Bernardon Martin, uh, manufactured by, well, designed by a Saint-Étienne gunsmith by the name of uh, Thomas Martin, and then uh, in partnership with Etienne Bernardon. And I believe the deal was Martin was the gunsmith who designed it, uh, and then Bernardon was... E it, it, there's very little information on these, and what there is is a bit unclear. Bernardon was either the financier, or he might have been a gun shop owner uh, at the time who contracted with Martin, you know, a joint venture, you make the pistols and we'll sell them at my shop. Something like that. Um, there are two major versions of these guns. There's a 1907 pattern, which we have here, and a 1909 pattern. And then apparently by 1912, uh, this whole effort was over and they gave up and sold off the stock. There was actually a 25 caliber gun called the Hermetic that was manufactured sort of from these parts. Uh, when they gave up and liquidated the Enterprise, someone bought it all up, and there was one last gun made from those parts. But I'm leaving that one out for this video, because I don't have an example of it. So it's important to put this gun in context before we take a closer look at it. When this was patented in 1905, there weren't a whole lot of other legitimate pocket pistols available in France. Well, available anywhere, um, as far as semi-auto guns go. The, the one obvious one, the main uh, contender in this field, was the Browning 1899 and then 1900, produced by FN, and those were extremely popular pistols. In fact, those were the reason that these guns went out of business after about five years, was these guys just couldn't compete with FN and the Browning 1900. Beyond that, however, uh, most of the semi-automatic pistols manufactured before this time were relatively large guns. They were intended for military use, or at least not for actual, like, small enough and unobtrusive enough to put in a pocket. So guns like the Mauser 1910 weren't available yet. Um, mo like I said, most of the guns out there didn't really fit this specific purpose. So. Martin had something going for him when he started producing these, and in total he would make at least 3,000, 3,500, maybe as many as 4,000 of these guns total, and that's not too terrible. It wasn't enough to sustain the business, but it wasn't a complete commercial disaster. All right, we will start by taking a look at this guy. This is a first variant 1907 model Bernardon Martin, and there were a total of three variations. There was basically an early, a late, and a transitional in between. And what makes the early one distinctive is it has a fixed magazine that you load from the top. Before we look at the magazine, let's check the markings here. This is Bernardon Martin, uh, made at Saint-Étienne, and Brevet is patent. SGDG is basically just uh, lawyer talk. It says that the government says that this is patented, but doesn't guarantee that it will actually work. And then on the other side, the name of the pistol, l'automatique Français and a little logo on top that is so dark and small that the camera is going to have a hard time picking it up. All right, as far as functioning goes, this is supposed to lock open on an empty magazine, but the catch is worn and it doesn't really want to, so this is the slide release which I'm going to hold up just to uh, keep it open. I'm not entirely sure how this was supposed to be fed, because there are no obvious cuts for a stripper clip. Um, I have not seen any pictures of whatever sort of clip arrangement was designed for the gun, so maybe there was something that just nested over the whole top of the gun, or maybe there was nothing and you were just supposed to lock it open and then load cartridges one at a time. At any rate, it was clearly a problem because they didn't get, uh, they almost certainly didn't get to a thousand before they changed this system and introduced a detachable magazine instead. Um, I don't have an example of one of those here, um, but there was a 1907 with a magazine release button down here. Um, and a whole standard detachable magazine. Now this is a blowback system, there's a spring inside, we have a manual safety right here. Uh, striker fired, so there's no exposed hammer, which is kind of nice. What is kind of also unique about these guns is they are entirely held together by screws. So normally you like to think of the, the, the gun designer's art as being one of the elements, is how can you make the gun that is simple and easy to disassemble without small loose pieces or any tools. Uh, Tomas Martin didn't, I don't know if he even tried that, he just built this whole thing with screws. So we've got screws holding in the back strap, 
somewhere in there it's going to hold in the mainspring. We've got a screw there that holds in the safety. We've got one here that probably holds the striker in place as well as the extractor. The screw in the front holding the slide assembly on. A screw here. Uh, a couple of screws there. Everywhere this thing's screws. In 1908 they went ahead and set up a new company of their own to market and sell these pistols, and also added a couple new patent claims. And the result was the model of 1909, Bernardo and Martin. This is a model of 1909. It is basically the same functional system, still blowback, still all held together with screws. Uh, but there are a few changes. Uh, the 1909 went straight to a detachable magazine, so magazine release down there. Have this. These are, I should have mentioned actually, these guns are in 32 ACP, uh, 765 Browning, which was obviously the popular caliber because of the Browning 1900 and 1899 pistols. The other distinctive thing that was added to the 1909 is this lever, which is a manual hold open. So this does not lock open when the magazine is empty, but if I press that down, that locks the magazine open. There are a few other stylistic changes that were made. The front of the slide and frame assembly is square here instead of round. The slide serrations have been replaced with some uh, uh, kind of tapered steps here instead. But largely this is pretty much the same pistol. Now this one is um, a particularly high serial number. This is about as high as anyone knows of. It is number 3232. And it is possible that by this time Martin may have already been out of this game. He may have just sold his patent rights entirely, because on the right side of the gun we still have that Brevet SGDG. But on the left side this is now simply marked System Bernardon. So he wasn't the original designing gunsmith, he may have just bought the rights outright. We do also have a marking on the top of the slide now for the caliber there. Uh, the markings on these guns kind of jump around quite a bit. Sights are basically what you would expect for a pocket pistol. Um, a shallow trench, and a small blade front sight. Well, these guns are remarkably difficult to find today. In fact, more difficult to find than you might expect given the production numbers, which were in the thousands. Uh, and when you do find them they're usually kind of like these, with mediocre finish and broken grips and often missing or really worn parts. So. Pretty unusual to find them. I would love to find a couple of the other variants at some point to do some video on, or better yet, really a fully functional version to actually try shooting with. Uh, until then though, we can at least take a look at these two and uh, learn what we can from them. Thanks for watching.